So here's the deal. As starting YouTubers, you need a day job. For example, I'm a server. Something you may not know is that this guy, he's a DJ. I'm a freelance DJ for a very rad DJ company. We work all events, but I mostly do weddings throughout all of SoCal. Today, the founders of the company, Tony and Ian, decided to call all the DJs in for a photo shoot. Because of course, yet again, they want to update the look of our company's brand. We thought this was the perfect opportunity to see just what it takes for a 12-year-old boutique DJ company to stay relevant in this highly competitive market. Let's do it. If you have a business idea, I think it's important for you to ask yourself, what problem are you solving? What part of the market is not being served? And what are you doing that's different? We saw a lot of super cheesy wedding DJs. Are there people out there that want something else? Do they want someone that they would want to invite to their wedding as a guest? Someone cool, someone who understood music, and someone who could actually mix. What if the music was the entertainment? What if the DJ was competent on the microphone, but he wasn't making a meal out of it? He wasn't telling a joke about the salad or sitting in grandma's lap. He was actually focusing on making the good clean announcement if it was needed, and then getting back to his job. So it seems like you guys are on the right track from the beginning then. I think what's I think we were the wrong thing. When we first started out, we had this idea to do so, Shark Tank. so much. We got some advice from someone and they were like, well, what do you actually need? What if you just got ten or twenty thousand dollars? We were like, well, I guess we just need turntables and and some speakers. So the best like, advice we ever got. They were like, why do you need a storefront in Los Angeles for a DJ company? We were like, yeah, how often are you walking down the street and like, oh, look, a DJ company. Let's go in and hire some DJs. Start with the absolute necessities. Uber's crushing it because nobody had thought that there was a better way than a taxi. So what is it about your business that solves an existing problem and then expand on it, blow it out, slowly build, 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 build. We started just the two of us and then it grew into something exponentially bigger, but yeah. but at the same time we still, you know, try to maintain a boutique aesthetic. We've got people who like music and are nice people. A lot of people think that the name is the most important part. They kind of overthink it sometimes. Once you have a name that's supposed to embody whatever your brand is. Where did Red Shoe come from? Tony was driving home from a gig and was like, I was driving home, I was listening to this David Bowie song, Let's Dance. He's like, I think the name Red Shoes is a great name for this company. And, 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 and I was like, that actually is a great idea. I think it should just be Red Shoe. There's, there's an art to the business card, I realize. There's a psychology, and, and especially now where everyone's on their phones, it's so digital. But it's almost like you're getting a part of that company. You can feel the quality of the company within the palm of your hands. Does that logo talk to a millennial? Or does that logo talk to a 35 to 45 year old? How did you come up with the Retro logo? We got Last so year. lucky with the original logo, I feel like. We had such a clear idea. The, the, the association with music is in the name, not in the image. The old company that we used to work for, a lot of the people around him had a, a different type of aesthetic, and we wanted to go a little bit more right. street and a little bit more normal and not stereotypical wedding DJ company. When you hire one of our DJs, you don't have to worry about, is this person going to say the wrong thing on the microphone? Are they gonna play a song that makes half the people leave the dance floor? Are they gonna throw my request list right out the window? You already did all of your homework. Now it's our job to show up, use that homework, and create something memorable for you and your guests. Look at this. Oh, that's too much sauce. Back off the sauce and hit you with a book. And now I'm reading a book. I'm reading a book. <laughs> so, so much changes in 12 years, 13 years. What was it like starting a company there to where you eventually evolved to? The hardest part is that negotiation between a company that's 13 years old and them saying, oh, they've been around forever. What's the right. new fresh thing? Shiny new thing. What if you're the company that's been around forever and keeps it fresh and reinvent yourself and create something new for the same client to still be excited about? 
13 years later. That's actually why I think today is even happening, is because of how important it is to be in people's phones, in people's computers, and it has to change so fast. You can't just sleep on it. Change your Instagram, the website, and then the way that people interact with the website, and then put up a new mix, and then put up a new video. It's a living thing. If, yeah. if, if the website is your main storefront, it's got to be a living, evolving thing. To give you an idea of how fast it is, we just redesigned the website a year ago. And it looks good, and we and get compliments on the site all the time, and that's how but like, a, on it you have to be. And a year like. later, this whole photo shoot is about rebranding all over again. If you continue to reinvent yourself and keep it fresh, it keeps your company from being old. Yeah. And that makes you ask questions about your company. We've actually grown more because we've had to revisit it more often. It makes you break everything down on this molecular level that maybe wouldn't, you wouldn't be do done it otherwise. I feel like it's so rare that there's this many guys who are all on the same page about what it means to be a DJ and what it means to really care about this as a job. What advice would you give to somebody that was starting, not just a DJ company, but any business really, what would you give yourself as advice 12 years ago if you could talk to your old selves? Following your passion. That's the biggest thing that the Red Shoe model is about, which is that like, if Ian you- Ian has always wanted to be on Shark Tank. That's true. Always, this is a dream. This, this is, is a dream. This, this is, is a the best dream, you know, and he's giving you gems. dancing. I want to see the person that's sitting on the sidelines get pulled into the dance floor by the person that's dancing. Maybe you're playing a full minute and a half. Maybe you're just playing a chorus. Maybe you're playing five minutes because the song is that good. Things that never actually happen when you're DJing. If you stop being excited about your job, if you stop being excited yeah, about- Yeah, it's that old adage about if you go on stage and you're not a little bit nervous, then something's off. Then you might as well go do something else. Still, to this day, after however many gigs. Between five and 600 each. Weddings, specifically, yeah. and then, you know, about I people, still get nervous people before won't I go want. out. Even if I know, like, the, if, even if it's just like a loungy thing, I know the first 12 songs I'm gonna play, I'm still like, and that's, I think, a good thing. You have to be. And that's what people, people are excited to see you be excited. Bye, Wrigley. Bye, Wrigley. Bye. We got everything? <laughs> All right, I think that's a wrap. That's a wrap. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he gave it to you. <laughs> that was enthusiastic.